Greetings, you fellow hunters of nostalgia, and welcome back after many, many years to Banished with me, Lathrex. And of course, welcome to the full playthrough I was looking forward to the most all month. So this month, as you can probably tell, I've gone a little bit crazy with nostalgia, looking at all the games I used to play, in addition to really focusing on the city builders. And this is one of the original greats. This is Banished, the calm yet brutal game in which you try and make a band of survivors simply survive in a hard and unyielding environment. There are no enemies to face, however there are disasters which can happen, including tornadoes, fires, infestations, and all of that good stuff. And the main enemy really is just the brutal winters and the fact that you have to be a little bit efficient in terms of placement, building, and everything else, which naturally I am not particularly good at. So today we're going to be doing a full playthrough on the hard difficulty, and we're going to have the following goals. I went away for 10 minutes and these are the goals I could think of which would be both challenging but actually doable in the week I'm going to be recording this. So first of all I want to get to a full 1000 people total, I want to survive for at least 100 years, I want the village to be at maximum happiness and maximum health, this is the one which I've always struggled with in the past because keeping them happy and healthy can be a really difficult balancing act. In addition to that I want to unlock every single unlock in the game, that means all of the different seed types. So we have have all of the foods and all of the different orchards and everything else, which means we can make pretty much everything we want to make. On top of all that, I want to leave the place as mostly self-sufficient, so I don't have to continuously do things, it can just survive by itself, which means the children who become the educated people, who then eventually become the laborers, need to balance out as well, since population in this game is really specific. You have children who do eventually become students if you have a school, and then they become laborers, the laborers will eventually die off, and then you have a kind of baby boom leading to a population explosion, leading to problems later on where you may have too many children, not enough adults. It is really difficult to manage, but I think we can get it to be self-sustaining by the end if I play it correctly. So with that ranty goal section out of the way, we are going to be calling ourselves Lathford. And we're going with the valley terrain type, the hard difficulty, the harsh climate. This means that on many occasions your crops are going to die early because the harsher winters will come on earlier and last longer, so actually farming may be more difficult. Of course we're going to have disasters on and starting conditions on hard. This means we get less to begin with in addition to no seeds, so we can't actually farm to begin with. With all that out of the way, let's get into the game. And so begins Lafford, next to a glorious river, and wow, I underestimated how big this map was going to be. Okay, so we want to cover as much of the map as possible, but ultimately we just want to get to a good amount of population and have a true sustainable village. So straight away then, what I want to do is quickly pop up all of these, so that's the event log, we have the stats... So that's going to be how many people we have. So we have eight adults and six children currently with us. The children, of course, are just leeches for the time being. As horrible as that is to say, they aren't going to be useful for a while. Let's have a look, see. So a six-year-old there, a seven-year-old. Okay, so at least they're not like z just um, newborns. I was about to say zero-year-olds. So they will be functional soon. So of course what we're going to want straight away is to put down some houses. We aren't going to be able to make things like clothes for a while, so making sure they have at least comfortable places to live is going to be pretty vital. On top of that, we, won't, we don't have any seeds because we started off in the hard difficulty, so the crop fields and the orchards are useless for the time being. So what we need is other sources of food. So what is that then? Oh yeah, the gatherer's hut. Okay, so the gatherer's hut... We want to pop out nice and far away so we're not going to deforest this for any good amount of time. Or maybe we should be up here. Could build a bridge. Actually, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a bridge and pop the gatherer's hut there. That'll be the next project. Then we can have the forester nearby. Though if I'm correct, the forester and the gatherer don't really play nice completely because we'll be constantly removing the larger trees. We get less of the stuff the gatherer's after. Things like berries and all the small herbs. Which you can see in places like that and mushrooms. For now though, that's it. Let's just uh, cut down this whole section of forest and collect all the stone as well, please. So, let's go. All of this. Let's get rid of it. Oh, 
Okay, so we have four houses, we have a small stockpile, we're building our bridge right now, so that should be up and running soon, and then we can build our gatherer. So we also need some firewood, we are immediately out of that, so for the time being, I guess I'll just put down our woodcutter right next to our stockpile. Then we need to consider where the forest is actually going to go. So this is how things are looking entering the first winter. I kind of forgot how fast this game moves. So we have two fishing docks already. Oh no, one's already complete, one's being built. We have our gatherer, so we've just the single gatherer at the moment, because I remember the fishing docks being actually pretty good. So I'm hoping these two should provide all the food we need. We do have to consider tools soon, though. Thankfully, iron can be found on the floor until we make a permanent mine, so making sure everyone has tools makes everyone nice and efficient. Okay, Jeff, food now? No. Come on, people, please get food faster. You know what? We don't need any of those builders right now, really, so let's up all of our gatherers. There we go. Fantastic. The house is no longer starving. So we now have fish, mushrooms, and onions in there. We have loads of other stuff there. Fantastic. Things are actually looking okay. The second fishing dock is now operational, although it's not really needed at the moment. And some of our children are finally growing up. So now we have two libraries and one builder ready. So next thing is the storage barn, so we can start storing our food more efficiently. And then blacksmith and more houses, I guess. Yeah. Look at that tiny little community banding together. Aha, show Celsius temperatures. Sorry, Americans, but there we go. Now I understand it's cold. So this is how things look at the moment. We're now in light autumn again. We're about to hit the second winter since we started playing. And honestly, things are looking okay. I've actually turned off the woodcutter since we had so much spare firewood. We're now destroying all of this. We need the iron to make ourselves the blacksmith. We are now completely out of tools, so as soon as someone needs a tool now, well, that's too bad. Which makes them significantly less efficient at any job they're doing. So obviously, we need this up and running now. Oh, there we go. Our very first person without a tool is one of our fishermen. I'm guessing they're just using a stick. You're the most educated stick wielder. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here, as is tradition with these four playthroughs. First of all, I just wanted to say that honestly, this may be my favourite video I've recorded in absolutely months. This game is an absolute joy to record, and I'm so glad I've been able to go back and record with it once again. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and as usual with these four playthroughs, likes and comments help out so much, since the algorithm really hates these long-form videos, unless they get enough interaction. I hate asking for it, but as you can see on the channel, it is really helping out lately. With the channel growing for the first time, in a very, very long time, so thank you so much for all of the support. It allows me to record these videos, which is the main reason I got into YouTube in the first place. They are the videos I just love recording, and they just make my day a little bit better. So thank you all so much, I really do hope you enjoy, and now back to the past, where Lathrys gets a lot of things wrong. Also, it's a different world seed, it turns out. That'll be in the description below if you would like to play along, because I messed up with that first bit and had to re-record the intro. So, anyway, back to the past, back to Banished, and with me making some really obvious mistakes. Mostly with reading. It's spring, our source of food is doing really well, turns out fishing is fantastic. And the blacksmith is just now finished. Fantastic. Let's start building some iron tools. Eventually, we can make steel once we have our mines and everything else, but for the time being, just regular iron tools will be great. There's a big chunk of iron over here as well, which I'm trying to gather, so as soon as we have that, everyone can finally start being efficient again. Building a brand new wooden house as well, so we can get some more children, so we can get some more laborers. It is now light spring on the Earth 3. Okay, just making sure that a variety of food helps out. And happiness is set up by a load of different things. Okay, good. So right now we do have a good variety of food, lots of fish and lots of just stuff gathered, so our health is 4 out of 5, which is okay. Really, we need to start trading, so soon we can set up proper farms. That's the best way to get food by a long shot. 
Though once again, the uh, fishing huts have been way better than I've expected. This is either going to make things speed along nice and quickly or cause our downfall, but I'm building a full six new houses. This means we're going to get a lot more children, because currently we're very low on children, and that means a lot more food is required, but later on we're going to get loads more laborers. On the upside, we actually have loads of laborers right now, so we now have the full eight fishermen. Everyone has tools, once again. So next, we need to see how do we make any form of clothes. I'm assuming it's just the tailor. So the tailor can go here, still nice and close to the regular stockpile, and then we continue from there. Oh, saying that, everyone has hide outfits at the moment. Obviously, we have no hide. We need to get a hunter. That's what we need. We need a hunter right now. Okay, so... Hunter's cabin, let's put it right next to the gatherers, sure. Probably should put some stockpiles over here, but for now we'll just leave that. Uh, let's pause these houses. Pause the tailor. Let them focus on building the hunter's cabin. We have just survived our third winter, so far things are going okay, although we are now officially out of clothes. That's going to start affecting health and happiness, because all of our new children can't be clothed. And speaking of that, it is actually weird to have a more realistic um, way to get new population in these games after playing games like Stonehearth and Kingdoms and Castles where people simply arrive once you've met certain criteria and of course they're already adults and working. In this, it's a risk-reward system and as soon as you build a new house, a couple will move in if possible and they'll start having children. Once the child is an adult, they'll stop having children until those children move out again. For instance, these two have already had children and they've just had another child now that the old adult has moved out to a new house. I think it's very young as well when the, when the people can start working. I think a child becomes a uneducated labourer if you don't have the education system at a very young age. I think it's like 10 or 9, something like that. But I'm not entirely sure. After all, survival is all that matters here. Okay, the Hunter's Lodge is operational, and straight away we've just got some hide. Which means we've also got some meat. Because, well, of course, this isn't just for the hide for our clothing, although that's the main reason I want this over the other food stock. It's also another food type. More food types, hopefully more health for our people. Keep them warm, keep them well fed, and the plague should hopefully not affect us too much when it arrives. But remember, natural disasters are also active in this game, so things like earthquakes, I believe, can happen, and... Are there tornadoes? I can't quite remember. The first house with actual venison. Fantastic. So, what is next then? What's our big goals to make everything more sustainable? Because at the moment, the problem is gathering iron is difficult, gathering stone is difficult, getting all... everything is difficult. Well, the next big ones we can do are the mine and the quarry. Now, the quarry is a dangerous job, and you will have people die working here, but it isn't a... I don't know if it's actually endless stone, but it's a truly amazingly high amount of stone. Then you can also build mines into the uh, rock itself. Then hopefully with that, you can get yourself some iron. Now, trying to find somewhere to place this, I remember being an absolute nightmare, but that's a problem for later on, not for now. How close that is, but not quite. That's going to be really irritating. Now we do have the herbalist. Oh, so it's the herbalist which gathers the stuff for medicine. That makes sense. I thought the gatherer also did that, then I noticed I have no medicine. We've kind of stacked everything here, and the problem is I'm also now putting the forester there, which, again, I don't know if that messes up the others. We'll find out soon enough. For now, though, the tailor, fantastic, and yeah, just the hide coats would be wonderful. Thank you. We also need seeds so that we can get more reliable food and also have a lot of variety that way as well. Aha, the trading post. That's what we need. Okay, yeah, next is the trading post then. I really want those seeds, and I think this is the way to get it. As long as this river is attached to the end of the map, right? Because I think that's what it needs to be. Yes, on one side, and I'm assuming yes on the other, since this seems like the main river on the map. Perfect. Okay, hopefully that is how that works, because honestly, I can't remember. This took so long, it was definitely the wrong choice. I think a quarry would have been better here. But okay, the trading post is finally being built. Hopefully, in... Maybe a year or two we'll be able to get some crops and have some proper farming fields. 
We now have 25 adults and 8 children, which means, yeah, probably need more houses again at this point because I'm assuming these houses are no longer producing children. It is weird speaking about them as such a commodity, but it is so true. It's a risk-reward system, having children in this place, and right now, we need more of them. Also, yeah, it seems like the forester is actively stopping the uh, gatherers from being quite as good by having all these little baby trees. But I might be wrong, looking at it again. I wish there was an output bar, but I can't see that anywhere, unless I'm going absolutely mad, which I might be. I can't see, like, a, uh... This season, you produced this much, and last season, you produced that much. If there is one, I can't see it, but hopefully I'll find it by the end of the video, if there does indeed exist such a thing. Yay, a trader! Okay. So, we can do auto-purchases, and I believe auto-sales. So, firewood, I think, is going to be worth quite a lot. So, let's... We have loads of wood, so okay, let's do 200 firewood, let's put at least two people, one, two, at least two people actually working there, I was doing the wrong thing there, and hopefully that'll stock up soon. It was a really harsh winter, the temperatures went lower than I've seen before, but now everyone has clothes. We have no one currently without clothes, so things were a lot better. I'm also building another hunting cabin. I still don't know if the forester is affected by the trees being so small. The only thing you can see in the tooltip is the more trees or forested area, the more food they get. I don't know if the small trees count or not. It seems fine so far. I did try looking online and I saw horribly mixed messages. Some people saying, yes, it's the worst thing ever. Please do not keep them together. And other times being like, yeah, this cluster's wonderful. Keep these clusters. It's hard to say. With the hunting cabin, it's just the less civilization nearby, the more odds that there's going to be food nearby, which obviously is important for us. Haven't had a boat yet. I'm hoping we'll have one eventually, though. A merchant has arrived at the trading post. So they're selling bean seeds! In addition to squash and plums. Oh, we need more than we have. You can't store money in this game, it's all about trade value. Wow, I need way more of everything. Okay, take 10. Coats, I don't know how much of these are worth. Logs will be okay, but not really what I want. Uh, you know what, steal all the firewood for now. And I guess we have loads of fish. So we could put like a good amount of fish here. So, uh, sorry, what are the seeds again? Bean seeds? Ooh, we could order some stuff, though. So I guess I want basic stuff, really. Um, like corn, yeah. Something like corn or peppers or cabbages. So I'd love to order that. And hopefully we have enough to buy the beans now. That would be fantastic. And so... We now have beans... Fantastic. That cost a lot though, it cost us a lot of our coats, in addition to loads of food and firewood. Minus 12, oh firewood's low. Oh yeah, uh, we don't want to keep that stocked right now, please. There we go, let's, uh, let's unstock the trading post. Put the fire, the firewood back in people's homes in addition to the food. So yeah, we can make beans now, so we'll do that next season, I suppose. As soon as it becomes spring, I'll plant some beans along here. We'll see how well that does. Wow, super cold at the moment. Yeah, I know firewood's low, but don't worry, it's going to be moved back into the homes and everything soon. Our ten-year-old farmer! Okay, you're trusted with our main food supply. And I shouldn't have doubted you. Who'd have thought selling a thousand fish is pretty uh, brutal on your whole economy? Okay, our tools are back up and running, so let's turn the blacksmith off again for now. Okay, completely out of wood, that's the main problem. We do have the forester, so wood is returning, it's just instantly being used. 
Now, during winter, farmers essentially just act like normal laborers, so don't have to keep on removing them every single winter, which is good. I'm hoping we'll get the full set. I assume we harvest in autumn? Light summer and the beans are being harvested and wow, that is more food than we could possibly need. Fantastic. Okay, so good to know that the beans will act as a safe amount of food. We still want the fish and everything else to give variety to our people, but this is going to be the bulk of their diet. Just copious amounts of beans. Let's build the storage barn next then, because clearly we need that. We cannot store all the food we've just got. I think it's about time we start some more heavy industry. Okay, so now we have two sets of foresters, because wow, did we just really mess up in terms of keeping our people happy and uh, warm. Thankfully, it seems like they just about got away with it. So, well, I just about got away with it. They just about survived. So more foresters, and then I'm also going to build one of the woodcutters closer by. Eventually, another thing we'll have is a market. The market will move all the things required for these houses closer by. Since this is probably going to be the capital of our empire, our empire, our little village, once everything is all expanded, definitely what I want. And so it begins, we have our first quarry. This will actually get deeper as people um, mine it out, and it will take a very long time to be completely mined out, but still, Loads and loads of stone ready. With that stone, we can start building things a bit faster. Next up after that is a true mine, which requires lots of stone, lots of wood. So then we have... I don't know if a mine is unlimited. I know a stone, a quarry definitely isn't. Oh, we hit the food cap. Now, this can be increased, but no, I'd rather them all just work as laborers for the time being. And there goes all the food, because I just built a couple more houses, and instantly they grabbed all the food. So, back to work for now, but good to know our food is still increasing so quickly. Building a new forester over here. Our quarry is doing great. It's almost built the mines from just gathering all the stone from there. And, yeah, things are looking really good so far. Okay, so I'm completely biased here, since I used to have chickens, but we need those chickens. Okay, so let's put some people to work here, and... What are we going to sell? Last time we sold loads of firewood, we don't really have those available this time. So how about loads of beans, because we have just a ridiculous amount. We'll sell a little bit of the firewood we have, and then we'll sell 10 of the hide coats. Currently we don't have the tailor on, that's why that's a bit low, and that should at least get us a couple of the chickens. Yeah, hopefully that'll work out. Now, I put down under the crop field here just to test something. Obviously we don't want that now. What we want instead is the... Am I actually blind? Potentially I am. The pasture, there it is. So let's just make it equal to this one for now. Okay, let's pause all the other constructions, which is the mine and our new woodcutter. And hopefully we'll have this up and running before the chickens um, are no longer fed. Okay, so it turns out this trader won't buy beans. I really should have checked that beforehand, but still that's fine. We just tried a few bits and bobs that we had, so a couple of coats, some tools, etc. And now we have two chickens, so as soon as the pasture's built, which should be any second now, there we go. And chickens. Okay, lovely. So we should have enough people to work it, I'm thinking, once I remove these people. Okay, apparently we have two chickens here. I can't actually see them. We should visually be able to see them in this game. So I'm assuming they're walking over slowly. There they are! Look at those lovely tiny brown specks on the grass. Hopefully one of you is a cockerel, otherwise we're going to have problems here. Well, we still only have the two chickens, but we are already producing some eggs. Not many, but I'm assuming once this thing's completely loaded with chickens, then things are going to be absolutely fine. A tiny little baby chicken. So, yep, one of them was definitely a lad. Well done, lad. We've made a grand total of nine steel tools already. It seems like one miner mining coal is actually a decent amount for this single blacksmith. The schoolhouse is now also being produced. 
It fit perfectly over there. At the moment, it's not the cutest village ever, but it is working. Our people are surviving, and honestly, that's all I care about at the moment. And we are getting more medicine now into the pool, so our health is increasing again. In terms of food variety, I think we're doing fantastic. Eggs are now becoming more of a mainstay. We have beans, venison, fish, multiple roots and everything else from our gatherer. Although, maybe I should make more gatherers at this point. Sure. And one school teacher. There we are. I don't know how old the workers have to, sorry, the children have to be to become students. I cannot remember how that works. Again, most of this is off memory of a game I haven't played for. You know what? I'm actually going to look how long it's been since I've played this. It's been eight years. This is a very warm summer. So then, uh, we have 48 adults, one student, and seven children. So at last, one of our children are now a student. Oh, and the teacher there is incredibly unhappy and incredibly unhealthy. Okay, it says they're idling. I honestly just read that as dying. So that was interesting. Our health is really poor at the moment. I'm not entirely sure what went wrong there. We still have coats. We still have medicine. Oh, it did until just then. Maybe we need more medicine. Maybe it's just not enough for our people. We are now seeing the issue with the schoolhouse. As our population ages, normally I'll be getting some more adults to replace them as laborers, but instead I've now got students. They would normally be in the workforce. So for a while, I've had to stop pretty much everything and just focus on maintaining life. But soon, those students will form adults and be better adults than the previous adults, and the world will be better for it. As you can see, people continue to die of old age. I'm also building a hospital, which I think should help out a lot as well, and I'll be building a new herbalist as soon as I have the people to do so over here. So I'm going to be keeping all this section wild for all of our stuff, and I'll be expanding over here for new houses and everything once this section's completely filled. We do, on, on the other hand, have 12 chickens! And egg production is actually pretty decent already, so I'm thinking about making just more of these lovely pastures. We now have the full maximum amount of chickens, or at least we did for a second there, so we are now harvesting the chicken as well. So not only are we getting eggs consistently, when we reach one more above the maximum, we then also get some chicken meat. Which is another food type for our people, and of course just another continuous supply of food, even into winter. Oh, okay, so schoolhouse works by increasing the amount of resource any profession produces. Then that's a lot pure efficiency then, isn't it? So yes, we are going to keep the school open. For a second, I was considering closing it and getting 11 workers into the, um, the labour pool, but I'm going to wait and keep on going. It's been a bit of a struggle, so everything's slowed down for a while, but it is going to pay off in the end. A little bit in the future here. Things may not look too much different, but now we have over 70 people total. We have students and children, of course, making up that number, and everyone has steel tools. We had a bit of a tool crisis, but thankfully that got fixed very quickly, and now we have enough laborers to get everything up and running. We have loads of coats, we have more hunters, and we have loads of food. We even have our secondary pasture now also producing chicken, which is really helping out food stocks. I really like the pastures, and I'm hoping I'll get sheep soon. That way I can have wool, which will make making these um, coats a lot easier. We do have the warm coats, which of course make our workers even more efficient during winter, but I'd settle for just regular wool coats. As much as I love the hunters, they are becoming very, very awkward, to say the least. Look how much coal we have spare now as well. So things are all looking better. We have a much higher percentage educated as well, so as soon as more educated people start doing more primary jobs, things are going to look better. Because currently, our blacksmith, for instance, isn't educated, and I've tried to get them to do other jobs so many times, and it's just difficult to get them to swap out. Eventually, the blacksmith will be educated, and then start producing additional tools. Same for the tailor. I really underestimated the power of an educated workforce. The second our blacksmith swapped over to an educated blacksmith, the amount of tools we have absolutely soared. The exact same for our tailor. Even our food is increasing, now we have educated farmers and educated pasture workers. Things are looking really good. And as such, I've built three new houses, while well, the third's now coming down, so we are about to hit another population spike, and we're even building yet another pasture. Even though the chickens are slowly driving me mad with their constant noise, I just love livestock in games like this. I'm really hoping to see cows or sheep as soon as possible. Especially now we have so much excess resource, 
I can actually start storing some of them over in the trading post. There we go, we now have access to pumpkins. And so, our food stock is more diverse, which I'm hoping will affect health. If it doesn't, it's still more fun. Now that is what I wanted to see. Okay, we have the ability to buy some cattle. They are very expensive, so I'm assuming we need at least two. I don't know if the game will just allow them to populate by themselves. Obviously that makes no sense really, but it is a game at the end of the day. Ooh, we could afford a couple of them actually. Now let's go with two for now. And let them populate naturally so we don't end up losing all of our firewood. Maybe three. Yeah, let's go with three. So now we have three cattle. Um, how do I change you if you're already set to chickens? I can't until you're empty. Okay, in that case, I probably just want to build a new pasture. I don't know where I'd build a new pasture. There we go. A very small cattle ranch, but a cattle ranch nonetheless. Uh, we don't need this many foresters at the moment, so let's just cap that out. Oh, that only needs one. Okay, never mind then. Some more spare labourer for the time being. The cows should move themselves soon. So, there we are. That's going to start providing beef for us eventually, and start providing leather. We have so many chickens. A little bit morbid, but it turns out each of the cows are worth 200 beef and a good chunk of leather. So there is a lot of food as soon as you finally have enough cows that they just grow a lot slower than chickens, which of course makes sense. Upgrading our homes into stone houses, and we're also changing our roads into stone roads. That way our people are moving faster and they're being kept warmer. We now have 17 children, 14 students. That's why at the moment food's a bit of a struggle since once again there's been a bit of a population increase and now a lot of our population are very, very young. So back to the waiting game. Although this area now is almost completely saturated, so it's about time to turn this into a non-wild area and eventually I really need to build a market. So what a market will do is it'll take resources from the entire town you're building and distribute them evenly as long as you have markets in each of the major population centres. At the moment that's not really too much of an issue since all we've got is one major population centre around a few wild areas, but yeah, gonna be expanding very soon. So I'm building my first market and I've noticed something. Used to provide a localised area for citizens to collect food, tools and fuel. And as you can see, it has a range around it. Now, does this mean only citizens living here will collect from this? Or is this the range where the market will collect things and localise them? I'm really hoping it's still going to be able to collect things, for instance, over here. Because I would love to turn this into a quarry zone or with blacksmiths or more mining apparatus. There's a lot we could do here, since, since I can fit a mine over here as well. And over here, I did check. So we'll see once it's built. My idea was having a market here, then a market near the south end over here, and then that's a lot of coverage, or perhaps even removing this crop field and having a market for this chunk. We'll soon see and figure that out. Just realised I actually didn't end up using the seed from the very start of the game, since I ended up recording the actual gameplay the next day after the intro, so this is the seed and everything else. I'll probably put this in the description or the pinned comment, just because... Yeah, some of those people like to play along, and people would be on the wrong map, I now realise. 66, 15, 21. Oh! Oh, you know what? I'm actually going to leave in me mumbling then. We now have over 100 people. I was not paying attention. So, little milestone met. We now have 100 people living in our lovely Lathsburg. I've also destroyed the small pasture over here. It wasn't really working properly, it seems, up for the cows. You need at least a few more for them to really function. So for now, it's just another storage barn, making things easier for everyone here, a new house. And I'm thinking of destroying all of this soon and making this more pasture land. And then going off here for more farming, sorry, for more foresters and everything else in this little block. Plus, we do have over here as well, producing at the moment an excess of wood. We have only 4 out of 16 foresters currently employed. The power of stone, um, roads and the power of educated people. Yes, I forgot the word road there. I'm keeping all this in. 
We now have two schoolhouses because we have 19 students. They can only house 20 each, and the worst thing that can happen right now is we let people go through uneducated. The reason why everything's going so well, finally, is because educated populations are so much better than I thought they were. Everything's done better, because it looks like you get more iron from the iron mine, and then when you go to the blacksmith and you turn that into tools, that iron is turned into more tools, so it's just exponential. Having so many educated people means everything is going better now. So much so, I'm constantly food capped, whereas before I was struggling. So I'm building a massive pasture over here. This is going to be our next cattle ranch. This way we can get more leather. I don't want to rely on farmers as much anymore. It's not farmers, on hunters so much anymore. Eventually you want sheep. So I think this whole area here is just our main farming section over here. Hopefully industrial eventually. There's a lot for us to do. Okay, good. Looks like I was correct with the market. So we have a single market worker here just to do some testing. And it's now holding... Fish, herbs, hide coats, iron tools. Perfect. So it holds a little bit of everything. Fantastic. For now, I don't want it to be working because by the looks of things, that's going to steal all of the resources. So I do need to build a secondary market over here as well. That way, these two places will then be nice and equalized and hopefully efficient. Feels bad taking away the first farm we ever built, but yeah, I think this is for the best in the long run. It's early spring. We're now going to be able to grow pumpkin, cabbage, and of course, more beans. We have now this huge pasture of cows, and the cows are growing way faster than they used to, which of course is what we want. And I've replaced this one with chicken. It really does seem like smaller pastures just go with chicken for the time being. And I'm going to leave some space here, which will eventually become the sheep pasture, once we eventually get access to sheep. Building loads of stone houses around, the market is doing a fantastic job overall, and the market over here of course will do the same job once we start expanding over here. But for the time being, I'm thinking just keep on upgrading the houses and stone houses and keep making this place more and more dense. There should be a lot of food this year. A pasture has developed an infestation. So it's emitting this uh, kind of funk. You can just about see it, the colors change right now. So what exactly does that mean? I'm assuming I've got to cull the herd. The voice is going to spread. That's my immediate assumption. Crop field, pastures, and orchards can develop pest infestations. Nearby fields that are growing the same crop or raising the same animal may become infected once a pest infestation breaks out. When infestations do occur, you can harvest crops early or move animals to, an to other pastures. After the infestation has passed, changing the crop or animal that is grown in a field will reduce the chance of occurring. Okay, so immediately then, goodbye. Yep, cull the chickens and then move in some cows, I guess. What a shame. That's going to be so much... Well, on the upside, it's going to be a lot of food right now instantly produced. Oh, no. It's spreading. Wow. I mean, I have nowhere else to move them, so... I was hoping I'd be fast enough, but... Oof. Okay, so this is how it's going to be set up. Chicken, cow, chicken, cow. Oh, but these two... Actually, these two didn't spread. This one spread to that. I'm assuming that's still too much of a distance then. Chicken are a lot easier to replace than cow. I'm going to empty this one, change it back to chicken then. So I'll have this one as a stopgap, so at least the large one can't affect the smaller ones, the small ones can't affect the large one, and again, lesson learned for the future. I'm now realizing building farms so far away from homes and everything else is actually a pretty bad idea since the people need to constantly run home to try and stay warm. Obviously, the coats help out a lot with that, but yeah, a lot of these fields aren't being completely harvested. On top of that, I don't think I had enough um, free laborers, so we actually lost a couple of people to starvation. That's why the overall health is now so low. Thankfully, that didn't last too long. I've also planted an orchard for cherries. These were finally harvested, so things are looking back to being a bit more balanced. But yeah, this whole section was a bad idea, and I will be replacing it with something better later on. We are now, though, over 150 people. So after a bout of starvation, now I understand the mechanics a bit better, we are now overflowing with food to the point where I've had to up the food limit several times. Yeah, that's all going well. Now, I'm swapping out these chickens, so I'm getting rid of them now because we finally have sheep. 
With sheep, we'll be able to get wool. So now we have an endless supply of leather and an endless supply of wool, which means I can finally start making the warm coats. The warm coats will allow our people to be out longer in autumn and winter, which is great because autumn is the harvesting season. And the big problem that was happening is the farmer would run over, get cold, then run back to their house for warmth. The hide coats are good, but not good enough. So I'm afraid this pasture is about to be, uh, yeah, some space is about to be made. Well, it took a little while, but now we have some warm coats, so hopefully that will eventually replace all of our coats, though we're definitely going to need more than just this single pasture of sheep. So, all the way over here, we're going to make another small pasture, and yeah, I've made a weird kind of pillar of farms. Don't know why I did that, honestly, but now I have. Once again, a wild section over here for some hunters and some foresters. We're going to have a new woodcutter since we did struggle briefly with firewood, although now that's going fine as well. Loads more housing here, and since we have the market, we don't have to worry about the tools getting here. They will be moved over here in time. Although at the moment, only iron. No, no, there are also still a few steel tools. I don't think our people are using iron tools unless they absolutely have to, so these have been here for many years at this point. We have two fishing docks. Things are looking finally nice and clean again. I can start being a bit more aggressive with my expansion. The quarry has now reached 50%. We do need a lot more stone, though. This game is just so pleasant. Stressful, but pleasant. Yeah, just making sure the warm coats definitely allow citizens to stay outside much longer. The actual help in this game is also really nice. It's just very easy to use. Because a few times I've said things which it turns out were just wrong. Then I've read up on it and, oh look, it's all fixed. I don't have to go googling it and getting a million different options. I love how when you send animals from one pasture to the next, they just go all by themselves and don't care about any hindrances. These sheep have gone through buildings, through trees, and through everything to get to their new home by the river. <laughs> really, they are the survivors here. We have a full 15 people now working on the quarry because it turns out I've gone a bit overboard with food. And it, once again, now I understand some of the mechanics a bit better. And yeah, we just need more homes, more people, more everything. We are low on tools. And that's just because I've been mostly making iron for our expansion, so I should really swap that back to coal. Then our blacksmith can start making steel tools again. Over here, there's space for two mines, like I said before, so eventually these will turn on when that one dies off. And I just need a big stockpile here, and that's about it. All this space is mostly going to be used for housing. Outside of the little farms in the centre because of just how efficient they are being here. Might need some other storage of them in the market soon though. Whoa, yep. Might, very well might need that. Welcome to Bean Village. Amazingly, most of our people now have excellent clothing, which is the warm clothing. That's fantastic. Only a few of them still have fair, so very soon... People are going to be a lot more efficient. Ah, we are currently down on a lot of farmers. That's not great. That's the one I really want to keep up. I'm going to build a new fishing hut over here. I'm not sure what to do with this space. So, we have loads of space to play with, though. Probably going to keep this area wild. I'm probably going to expand either here or here next. I'm thinking here because then we can also build a tunnel through this mountain, which is quite expensive, actually. But... Actually, how expensive would it be? A lot of stone, but still. If we build this tunnel, then we've got a nice square of um, outposts. Really should have read this faster. So with happiness, it causes populations to idle, making them less efficient. And things like mines and quarries will make them less happy houses are built near them. I didn't really know that. I'm hoping this mine is far enough away. I wish there was like an indicator to say how happy a house was, but yeah. Chapels, cemeteries, trading, but there's a lot of stuff we still haven't made yet. Oh yeah, we haven't made a single cemetery. That's very affecting happiness a lot. Our people aren't being buried in a more respectable way. Since we have a ridiculous amount of food currently stored, as soon as this harvesting season's over, I'm going to start growing some more trees. Okay, you can go away. So this will be our new orchard. We've just grabbed a new type as well. I think they're still the same size as regular farms in terms of the maximum size. So let's just line that up. Yeah, 15 by 15 is still the max. That's fine. And that is now going to be walnut. 
The one over here, I think, is plum the first one, or was it cherry? Cherry, okay, so we're gonna have plums, walnuts, and cherries. So, apparently a tornado touched down near town. I tried to find where it was, and it just wasn't anywhere, so it must have hit the edge of the map. That is horrifying. I wonder where it actually hits. Tornadoes will devastate everything, kill everyone in their path, so I think we just got very, very lucky. I think it's about time we start changing up this area. So I've built a market, I'm now building some houses so people can live here and actually be efficient since these two constantly lose crops. Same with this one over here, the cabbage, beans and pumpkin all end up losing crops every year. Oh, it could just be because the storage is full. I was thinking people just weren't being that efficient, but now I'm looking at it, oh. I have so much storage and so much food. Yeah, now I've got the market, that's already filling up. Maybe I should swap some of these then. We are already doing really well for food. I've, I, am, I am building a new orchard over here. So if we remove those and add a couple more pastures, we could get more wool. Wool itself is worth quite a lot, but the warm coats are worth a fortune. We could start selling them over at the trading post and start doing some auto purchases. Ooh, really tempted by that. Plus sheep are adorable. So we're in a bit of a rapid expansion phase now, so we need all the stone we can get. We have 24 students about to become adults, finally. We lost a lot of laborers all at once recently. So the issue is, with these population explosions, is that down the line, you end up with all those people passing away, and all at the same time, and then you lose loads of workers. So, constant expansion's a way to solve that, but eventually it will plateau, and you get the issue again. So anyway, loads of new houses going down here. We have the market already, we have a second tailor, so we're going to start selling the warm coats soon, and this area is probably going to become more farmland, so loads of food down here. Over here is where we're going to be building the new quarry, in addition to loads of mines. I've realised I can place like six mines just on this row here, so... Yeah, industrial section, that there, health has finally gone back up to four, happiness is now at four and a half, and that's because we have more herbalists. The herbalists are making sure everyone's nice and healthy. And, of course, we have a good varied diet, although we do still want to make it as varied as possible, so any additional food will be very welcome. Sadly, no seeds. That's really what I'm after. Not just a one-time thing of food, I want more seed types, so I can farm everything. Wow, warm coats are worth 20 each. They're saying that hide coats are worth 15, they're only leather, but we have loads of leather to spare, so much so I've actually started to store it here. That is way too much. Any other seeds? Pepper? Oh great, so there's another one. We don't have peaches, do we? I do like the orchards more than the farms, just looks-wise, so sure. We can now grow corn and peaches, in addition to all of our other food. In fact, now we're at four and a half health and four and a half happiness. So I've started to build some wells, which apparently make people happy, and I'll be building some chapels and everything else soon as well. Let's see if we can get that to five out of five. Reserve of stone is low. It always is, even though I have maximum amount of people currently working the quarry, which finally is about to finish. And so I'm building a new one over here. The mine is also just about to finish, but thankfully we already have a backup one and one almost finished as well, so things won't really slow down too much. Built even more houses here, going to remove this hunting cabin, and we're going to have a new pasture here. I think we'll likely be more sheep. We just need more wool, constantly. We now have over 200 people, which is fantastic. You're making coal, please swap to iron for a second, that'll be great. We're making some peaches over here, and I've decided against the pasture over here instead. We are, once again, going to be growing some more peaches. Let's get that into our diet. Then I'm thinking another market here, loads of housing, and then a massive pasture section here. And a really cute like as well. Sort of messed up a little bit, I forgot to build the schoolhouse first, and at least three people now grew up to be uneducated labourers. Doesn't sound too bad to begin with, but if they get roles like Blacksmith, they can really mess things up. And we do have a 76-year-old Blacksmith at the moment, so likely fairly soon, we are going to be needing a new Blacksmith. Yep, there we go. Straight away uneducated. Uh, let's wait then until we have some more labourers from our student pool, and hopefully that won't happen. Because otherwise, we're going to run out of all of our resources. 
Nope, it just allows idle citizens to enjoy ale. Good. Ale for everyone. Including the cows. Okay, what are you selling? And any new seeds for us? No. I think I'm getting very close to having all the seeds at this point. The abandoned quarries look absolutely brutal, and I absolutely love them, though I kind of wish we could do something with them. At least they're breaking up the monotony of the villages a little bit, but not necessarily in a good way. Makes me think of the Eden Project down in Cornwall in the UK, which was a huge abandoned quarry and now is a huge uh, botanical garden with eco-domes and everything. It's actually somewhere where I'm tempted to get married at. We've been looking at uh, wedding venues for last year, and that's potentially one of them. Now I just want to do something with this. How close can we build to one of these things? Oh, they really take up space. Okay, yeah, so these are just complete blots on the uh, environment then. That's a shame. Building a new settlement area over here, the new market, some houses and everything else. They won't be super happy because of the quarry, but oh well. Building a new tavern over here, building our first chapel, we're going to build a cemetery over here, and we now have all the pastures up and running. So we have two sheep pastures, a chicken pasture, and a cow pasture. Our food is still doing fantastically, and honestly, at this point, now that everyone is so efficient just with the tools and the warm coats and the better housing, things are a lot easier. The start of the game honestly had me very stressed, and we actually lost some people to starvation, but now things are looking fine. I think once I've finished all this, I'm going to finally turn these houses into stone houses. Also, I need to remove this storage car. It's been here for, since the very start. Or maybe I'll leave it as a memory. Yeah, a little sign of how far we've actually came. Yeah, let's go with that. So what I'm going to do over here, I have no idea. It's a lot of empty space, so I'm thinking farms. Oh, that's how a chapel works in this game. So it can serve so many people, I doubt then it matters so much its position. But still, straight away, we have too many people there. Okay, so where do I want to build the second chapel, which is weird to do straight after? I'm thinking probably in this village over here, if we have space. Can we maybe... There we go, next to the mines, sure. These mines are now holy. Yeah, I think we need to move all this a little bit further out, since I do want to keep on expanding this area, if possible. I wonder if it is to do how close it is, though. That's definitely an issue. Ooh, we could put it here. If we just remove this crop field. Yeah, sure, it's only a small crop field anyway, so let's remove that. And we'll put down the chapel there instead. If I can find it. There we are. Put down the chapel. Like that, next to the quarry. And then a small cemetery next to it. Ooh, how big does, does a cemetery have to be? Decent size, okay. So, I now have a grand total of 30 stone cutters, and I'm actually going to start harvesting stone from the map, because that does seem to be a little bit faster. So, any spare laborers, yep, get me all of the stone you can. The reason why I need that is because I am going on a bit of a building spree over here. Loads of new storage barns, some markets, some more regular farms, more houses. We're building absolutely everything we can over here. Oh good, the next chapel's finished. There we go, two clerics. So we can now support up to 400 people in the chapels. And we have over 300 people now. Things are moving so much faster. It's also a very nice year. The year is 69. Well, that's an awful place for a fire to happen. We don't have a well, but thankfully we have lots of people and they've all arrived at once to help. That is some synchronized kind of kneeling of water. Oh no. Well, that's significantly worse. But seriously, this is the one place I haven't built a well yet, which is so annoying and definitely something I'm going to do literally right now. In fact, I'll put the well where this old building was. Please don't spread any further. Oh, not the schoolhouse! Wow. Fire is, um, a lot more devastating than I expected. The last time it was fine, because it was right next to a water source this time, just far enough away apparently to cause problems. Ah. Well, thankfully, we're building loads of new houses, so the homeless people won't be homeless for long. Uh, the schoolhouse going down is a big problem. Thankfully, I just built a new one. So I have three teachers currently working. 
So I can hold up to 60. Good. Okay, so we're fine for now. Yeah, that's very annoying. Oh, and it's got an achievement. You've received an award. Stylish. So this is because I have at least 200 people, all clothed in warm clothes for at least four years. Thought I'd have got that sooner, honestly, but at least that people are happy. We were finally starting to lose food after our population has just been skyrocketing, but we have now built all these orchards and they're about to start actually providing food, so things are fine. Let's make some more corn. Now oh, at some point I'm going to come back and uh, try and do some of these achievements. One of them's really interesting here, mountain men. Using a harsh climate and a small mountainous map, maintain a population of 50 people for 20 years. Interesting. As soon as you stop building, especially with this many quarries, you get so much stone and so much iron just built up instantly. So, we're just going to continue to build. So, normal crop fields here, houses here, a new market there, and I've also started putting down some new foresters and woodcutters, because honestly, we are now starting to run out of firewood and all the other basics. I think we're doing fine for clothes still, though. Will I need more pastures? Not too sure. I'm thinking I'll build a tunnel through here, though, or through here to make things a bit smoother. Things are just moving so quickly now. Yet another food type, we now have wheat. These probably won't be harvested too well, though they're too far away from storages and there's no houses nearby, so... A lot of that's gonna rot. For now. Oh, okay, so the town hall is where you see the graphs. Oh, people are gonna be yelling at me in the comments. I was talking about wanting graphs since the very start. It's been three days of recording now. Whoa, okay, people are gonna be angry at me. Okay, so at least now we finally found the graphs. Oh, look, production and everything. Interesting. You see, this is what I wanted to see. Wow. So yeah, we produce way more food than we're using, though we are using a lot of food. Alcohol is currently being produced more than it's consumed. Fantastic. Textiles are being produced more. Clothes are starting to get close. Oh yeah, you can get nomads for population increases as well. I now remember that. Oh, so we are missing a fair few things still. We have all of the different animals. We're missing a lot of the fruits and vegetables. Did not expect that. Yeah, food went down for a while once I started uh, building all these areas, but now I'm finally building more farms, so that should be fine soon. Really neat. Should have built this sooner. Actually, no, I shouldn't, because it's really expensive. This thing, I think, is like 150 plus stone. Still, nice to finally have it. Okay, just unlocked a blacksmith. Equip a population of over 200 adults with steel tools for four years. Done. Ooh, tombstone. We might be able to do soon. I'm building a mass graveyard over here. That's only 64. Ah, we're going to need more graveyards. The best crop of all, potatoes, are now finally being grown in our little town. Well, our little town, I think we've hit 500 people now. Ah, oh, so close. Never mind, 487. We are so close to hitting the halfway milestone. I think I'll grab this section next. Uh, should I build a tunnel here? Probably. Then mark it there. Don't really know what to do with the space. I guess it's just going to be a continuation of this, honestly. An outbreak of influenza has hit us, so a bit of flu. I do have a single physician. Well, I have a single hospital ready, so... Hopefully, they'll just go straight there, get cured, and nothing bad will happen. And because we have maximum health, the odds of it spreading is a lot lower. Shouldn't you be heading towards the hospital? Nope, you're just gonna casually infect everyone. Yes, there we go, into the hospital we go, only two patients. Everything is... I was gonna say sorted, but of course, naturally, one more person. Are we done? Is that it? Anyone else? People, please stop going near the hospital. Note to self, hospitals should be built away from major routes. I didn't think people could get infected outside. Okay, some people are being cured now, that's good. 
So, we could allow the nomads to live here, but we're not going to. It's mean, but the problem is, nomads are rarely educated. In fact, I don't think they are ever educated, and that's not really something I want in my population right now. feel a bit mean about doing that, honestly, but... Yeah. Another goal met. We now have maximum happiness and maximum health. Our people are overjoyed to live here. In the town I totally know the name of. Lafford. Lafford, that's it. Like Stratford. That's how I ended up naming it. Okay, happiness and health have both gone down a little bit, and that's just because for a brief moment we ran out of firewood. I kind of forgot as soon as a house is built, the people will run out and grab firewood, and yeah, all of your uh, stocks suddenly vanish. Thankfully, we do now have seven woodcutters and 32 foresters, so this will fix itself fairly quickly. So this is going to be a new housing area, this is going to be a wild section for hunters and foresters and woodcutters, which again will help solve this problem, and then just some farms in between because, you know, food is cool. For a good two or three years there, we're actually losing food. Thankfully, once again, we're now producing more than we're consuming, but this is becoming a serious problem. We also definitely need some more cows, because although it says we have 2,392 textiles, it's almost all wool. We have loads of wool, nowhere near enough leather. I was thinking the cows would produce more than enough for that, but apparently that was a mistake. So the next area I build, I think it's going to be a town completely dedicated to cows. And I think I'm going to put it right here, so this will be a huge pasture zone. That'll be fine. On top of that, we're also running out of medicine, and tools are also becoming a problem. So, yeah, maybe I've expanded a bit too fast and a bit too greedily. But look at that lovely graph. Look at just how many people we're getting. Oh yeah, I should really stop selling leather. That's the thing we're lacking for clothes. Anyway, we now have pear seeds. So that means we have just one left, I think. So if we look-see, and inventory, not inventory, trade items. Yep, we now have access to pears. I wonder what the last one even is. Oh, we can order it. Okay, so orders and... I have no idea what we're currently missing. Oh, peppers. Yeah, we're missing peppers. Fantastic. Wow, and that's with the well right next to it. Seriously? We have two wells there and we're just not getting this fire under control. Well, that was pretty annoying. Okay, the clothing problem seems to be fixing itself finally by just adding more hunters. Though I am still going to add those two new pastures full of cows, which means way more leather. And I'm going to stop the trader from collecting leather as well, because that was obviously a very dumb thing for me to do. So that's 300 leather back into the pool. Mason, maintain two quarries with 30 workers for three years. Okay, we've just done that, and well, we've had four of them, but okay. Oh, and a new merchant. Are you bringing what I want you to bring? No, you're not. Yeah, you don't have the right seeds. That's a shame. Okay, so from you as well, same again. I would like pepper seeds, please. The year is 94, our health and our happiness has been stuck at 5 for a very long time now, so I think it's finally stable. Our new little settlement over here is almost complete, and we have two cattle pastures already. Not gonna risk these two being cattle as well, otherwise, well, infestation can happen, it happens quite often, honestly. So, probably chicken and sheep, and we're also building a couple of very small pear orchards. So even more food. Currently we're producing like 100,000 food every single year and consuming like 90,000, so it's always a very delicate balancing act. If that ever goes wrong, it's gonna go wrong really quickly and really badly. We now have enough stored clothes thanks to making loads more hunting cabins. The one thing I am concerned about still is firewood. It seems like no matter how many woodcutters I put down, how many foresters, we're never quite getting enough. And also, to get to that 1,000 people goal, I'm not entirely sure where I'm moving to next. I'm honestly tempted to see if we can make a settlement here really far away from the main body. This is going to be expensive to do and stupid, but I would like a little isolationist settlement taking over this entire middle island section. Okay, so it's not a true island. Actually, is it a true island? 
It actually is. It's just blabby massive. Okay, um, let's see how we're going to do that then. How expensive, for instance, is just the basic bridge going to cost? Oh, that's a lot of wood. Well, too bad. That's what we're building. In fact, I'll only build a couple. Let's make like a little highway thing going on. And I'd also like a super bridge connecting these two sections because I think that would look cool. Actually, no. Let's just focus on those two first. That's plenty to do already, thank you. Okay, one more achievement. This time, livestock. And that makes sense. We have loads of animals now. At least 60 cattle, 75 sheep, and 180 chickens. Oh, it was the chickens keeping us alive. I finally built a new um, chicken pasture. Oh. Sometimes I should just read those achievements. I could have got a lot of them at this point. So right now we have 36 laborers. The reason is one of our quarries has finally gone down, and we have loads of stone stocked. Because we're no longer building stone-heavy buildings, yeah, it backs up very, very quickly. So with these two bridges being built, we'll build the market there. And I want this to look like a little self-sustaining place. So I want its own chapel, its own town... Oh, wait, I can't build another town hall. Well, all the other stuff. So its own tailor, its own little foresting section over here. Basically, I want this to look like our starting place. Just a bit more isolation. This is for the people who don't like the hustle and bustle of the main town. So because people tend to live where their jobs are, all of these houses now are just completely filled with builders, which is great, because now everything's speeding along because they actually live here and don't have to run back every time they're cold. It's a pretty nasty run back. How did you two come from that direction? Really? Well, I'm glad I'm making that tunnel then. Yeah, I'm making a tunnel here, and then I'll make a large road going through here, because, well, this is a lovely, huge, wild section, and I want to fully capitalize on this before the end. So I'm going to be connecting it to the two areas a bit more, with some more storage barns. Well, good to know that direction's apparently viable, even if incredibly long-winded. Oh, uh, we keep on going down to four and a half health. The reason is, a lot of people had cold. Uh, a lot of people didn't have uh, firewood, so they got cold, and, and these long runs are also making people sick, I think. So that will solve itself. It does keep on going back to five almost every single summer. Just during winter, we apparently have the sniffles. Okay, it's summer, health is back to five. I've made one more brewer, forgot exactly where I've made them, but they're now brewing some lovely pear ale, which is definitely something I've never tried before, but still, apparently our people love it. So everyone is still nice and happy and nice and healthy. Okay, the chapel's finally got all the stone it needs. We're also having a little cemetery here. We're going to be building two orchards, two farms. Over here, I might just have this as another wild section. I have massively underestimated the power of the wild sections, the gatherers, the hunters, and everything else. As soon as I started putting those down, things got a lot simpler. I also want more fishing docks. Need to try and maintain as much food variety as possible, and at the moment, we're not really getting that much fish. Although we do have 60 fishers, we also have 169 um, farmers, for instance, so... Yeah. Placing this is awkward. There we go. It's like an overlap, maybe a tiny bit. Building for the future, I'll connect all these properly later. This river is going to be so out of fish. I'm assuming that doesn't actually happen. Do you finally have my pepper seeds? Why does no one have my... I keep ordering it and it keeps on not appearing. It's the last one I need. I don't care about any of the others. Seriously. Established. Build a town that has a population of 300 after 100 years. Well, we've definitely exceeded that. Oh, master builder. Oh, boarding houses. That's what we haven't got. Um, I don't think they're particularly good, though. Aren't they more of a uh, panic measure? Provides a temporary place for the homeless to live. Yeah, we don't really have any homeless, so we haven't need that. So I'm probably not getting that achievement this time around. Is this just bugged? Is this a different person? I keep ordering the pepper seeds, and they never get here. Although now I think of it, I may have accidentally ordered corn seeds at least once at this point. But I know I've ordered the right ones at least a couple of times. Oh... Custom order, never just once every visit. To be fair, 
the last time I did that, it actually came... Oh, the power of dyslexia is strong today. So, I misread what it said there at the start, at the very top. Custom order from that person, and it was on Never. Now I want it every visit. I obviously want the pepper. Okay, well, so far it hasn't actually caused any issues, but once again, people probably yelling at me in the comment section. Wow, I don't even know how I read that wrong. Well, it is what it is, I suppose. So, um, our population actually went down for the first time in a long while. Because we had such a huge population boom earlier, then we kind of stagnated for a while. All of those people started to get very old. But now, with all these houses, loads more children are being born, so this is the next growth explosion. Infestations are so common. It really does feel like it's not a random event every year, it's a random event every year based on how many fields you have. So each of them is rolling a dice and every time you hit a one, you get an infestation. Thankfully, we've learned from the past and we no longer have the same crop next to each other, so yeah, just this single cabbage field for this year is going to go down. Really should have been using this for a while to figure out what we have lots of and what we have very little of to try and balance our diets. So we have copious amounts of venison, fish, and... No, actually it was a big jump after that. So yeah, just venison and fish make up most of our diet at this point. It wasn't the case for a while, but yeah. Then potatoes, cabbage, mutton. Wow, eggs and chicken meat are very low. Much lower than I expected for how many we have. A chicken's just not as good as I originally thought. Squash is our weakest of our crops, so that's definitely what we should start growing more of. Our gatherers aren't doing the best. I mean, saying that, mushroom and berries are both from the gatherer, so I guess that's fine. I think onions is also gatherer and roots, so actually combined, that's fine. Okay, but yeah, hunters, I majorly underestimated the power of hunters. And there we go, and yes, that pepper did just cost 3,000, so it seems like they also overprice, sorry, overcharge when you uh, do the custom order, so definitely been doing that wrong the entire time, so yeah. Thankfully it hasn't really affected us, so no major problem. But there we go, all of those are now unlocked. Population is finally in a nice quick growth again, which is great, so any new farms I make are now going to be pepper. Actually, uh, it's late spring now, so it's a bit too late, I'll be swapping these both for pepper. We're getting close to our 1,000 goal. We just hit the achievement town, which means we now have a grand total of 900 citizens. Admittedly, a lot of them at the moment are students and children. We are definitely in the next great baby boom. <laughs> and thankfully, that'll eventually give us lots and lots of laborers. Okay, there we are. We have... I still don't get how somehow we don't have a fully educated or clothed society considering I've not let a single person through without being a student and we have loads of clothes. I guess at any given point the clothes from someone can degrade and then they have to grab a new set of clothes so that's never really going to be a hundred. I have no idea how some people are escaping education. Escaping education. Sounds like prison. Well, it depends on the place. Anyway, we now have one thousand people and although a big chunk of it a good third is currently students and children everything's going fine it's very very smooth our health is currently four and a half because i'm building all these new houses what happens is that the house doesn't have firewood people move in they get cold and then their health drops a little bit and that takes a very long time to recover and because i'm building so many houses that's happening a lot so the average is going down but as we've seen over and over again that does keep on going back to five so, I will happily say at this point, we have all of the conditions met. We have a self-sustaining, very healthy population who is incredibly happy. We have hit 1,000 people. We have survived 100 years. And I can't think of any other goal. Oh, and also we have every single trade item currently being grown. Over here, we are now officially growing our peppers. Those are the last ones to grow. I'm also trying to grow some more squash, so we actually have those in the inventory as well. But that's it. We have all the goals met. Now, I'm not going to finish just yet as I do want to finish off this village. It's almost done. This has now became the most populated area in my entire town, and it's actually struggling with only a single market. So I'm thinking a second market down here for these houses, and why more vendors? Though we do have 70 people already working as vendors. 
Oh, it happens every single year because of all new houses, a few people become freezing. So, on top of that, it turns out building this far out from the houses basically means these buildings just don't work, which is a shame. Thankfully, though, we are still making more food than we're consuming every year. We're currently making 115,000 and consuming something like 112,000, so it is very, very equal, despite the fact that a good chunk of our population, almost half of it, in fact, yeah, around about half our population is currently not even in the workforce. So, as you can imagine, once we get those people back, we can move them around and very easily uh, set up some new farms and everything else to make sure everything is stable. Those little sections of freezing, though, is the issue. It's just because I've built everything a bit too far away just for looks, and I've also expanded too quickly. Still, though, it is all still very self-sustaining, so that's decent. Okay, I think I've fixed all this. So, production for fuel is a little bit low, but that's easy enough to fix. Iron is fine. Tools, we are just about producing enough food. We are now in a nice excess of 20,000. That's the important one, really. Um, oh, we need more herbs. Okay, that needs to be changed. We need more clo- Oh, no, we don't need more cloves. It's because we've hit the cap. That's fine. Alcohol, we just about need more, so we need one more tavern, a couple more herbalists, and just more fuel. Yep, so just more woodcutters. Okay, let's sort that out then. The population now is starting to stabilize. As you can see, there are now more students than children because less children are now being born. Now all the houses are filling up. So as long as I can keep everything stable for a couple more years, I'll say this was actually a success. Even if, yeah, the, the placement near the end, this was just... It was me testing things, and boy, did they not work out as well as I'd hoped. It's the year 115, and now we are producing enough of everything. We're making enough alcohol. Once again, we made enough food, despite the fact it was a very cold year, so things just died very early on. We made 140 still, and consumed 125,000. So, yeah, I think this is just about it. We now are back to 5 health, and that's because I've started to shut down some of the stuff which was further away. Some of it I've actually just simply removed, and so people aren't freezing constantly. I guess the next step would just be to expand the markets and everything over here and over here, to make sure we actually have people available for those jobs, but yeah, this is it. I think at this point, we have hit a self-sustaining population. We now have far less children, way more students and labourers. Eventually, those labourers will pass away, and all that will stabilise. We have loads of spare labourers and don't really need the jobs, so losing labourers isn't really a problem. In fact, it would be easier if we had less population at this point. So I think Lathberg is done, and I am... Pretty happy with how I played, although definitely I made a few major mistakes, like with the uh, trader, with the town hall not being built so I can actually check things, and a lot of just misreading and misremembering things, but for a first try back, we have definitely succeeded. I may come back as a bit of a achievement hunt episode, if you would find that interesting, but for now, Banished is well and truly complete, and Lathberg is prosperous and beautiful. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that these random full playthroughs are still something you wish to see continued on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.